Teenage suicide is a massive problem, not limited to any one country. It's one of the biggest problems facing our world in 2020. Every hundred minutes another teenager takes their life. And today on the Mind, Body and Soul podcast, we are joined by an amazing cast of people who have experienced firsthand what it's like to lose a child to teenage suicide. Today you will hear about how they are working to transform the lives so as that no one else should have to go through this experience. All that and so much more on today's episode of the Mind, Body and Soul podcast. Welcome to the Mind, Body, and Soul Podcast with John Morris. Inspiring, motivating, and educating you in finding balance in the craziness of day-to-day -day life. Learn from and listen to a man who has a wealth of life experience, from business to bodybuilding, artist to author, and has learned to deal with his own physical and mental wellness. But that's not all. Each week, John interviews and picks the minds of special guests from all around the world and from all walks of life. From actors to authors, wrestlers to warriors, business owners to life coaches, and so much more. Welcome to today's episode of the Mind, Body, and Soul podcast with John Morris. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and children of all ages, welcome to the Mind, Body and Soul podcast with John Morris. I am your host, John Morris, as always, and welcome to the show that helps you find balance in the craziness of day-to-day -day life through inspirational, motivational, educational content. I've got a, a wide range of, of uh, guests on tonight um, from Sean Clark. Uh, we've got Polly and her family and Sophie, and I, the name's gone out of my head. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's already happening. Um, and we've got Scott Nickel on as well, and we're going to have a tremendous show today. Scott's, Scott's the man, so nice, we had to have him on twice. You know, we just love Scott. That's it. That's it, that's it. Um, and we're talking in particular today about, um, it, it's not the most fun topic, let's be honest, but it is about, it's a very relevant topic and something we need folks to be aware of. Social media bullying in particular and the effects that it can have on so many people. And, you know, we're going to throw through now, or we're not going to go through, should I say, and introduce people one by one. So who wants to go first? Out of all my guests, it's, it's relaxing and informal tonight. We'll go with Scott Nick. I'll go first. Go for it, Scott. Well, uh, I've, I've never had social media bullying. So, <laughs> so maybe, I'm, maybe I'm not the right person for this show. <laughs> uh, You're a big part of yeah, this. I'm also... Though. I'm part of the success. I'm on social media a lot and I, I use it, I try to use it to my advantage um, for, for music. The reason we've got Shan Clark on, the reason we've got Sophie Henderson, um, because they're really talented young artists, singer songwriters, and I've had the privilege of, of working with them. I get the chance to work with a lot of great people, but Sophie's got a single that's out just now. I'm sure she'll talk about it, mm -hmm. and Pauline and Dave. But Shan, Shan's got, it's like her first single coming out in December. So, and it's got a great message in that song as well. So, I, I mean, I'm just blessed to work with amazing people. So thanks for having me on, John. It's a pleasure. <laughs> of course, my friend, of course. Okay, so now we're going to go on to Shan. Shan, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi. Hi. So um, I'm Shan Clark. Uh, I am 16 years of age. Um, I live in a wee town called North Ayrshire um, and music is just a big passion of mine like I literally wouldn't be me if music wasn't like a part of my life and she's amazing as well um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I do sing like all the time sometimes my friends are like Shan be quiet because I'm like I'm singing so much <laughs> um but i just i'm so thankful for this opportunity and um, being able to work with scott um because this it's such a big project mm -hmm. to work with and um i'm just thankful for this opportunity that um that i've been given 
It is. It's an incredible and it's it's wonderful. And again, we're going to talk about so much on tonight's show. Obviously, we're here tonight to talk about a, a subject, and I will open this up to to um, Shan and uh, to, in fact, to Sophie, to Polly, uh, to Paulette, sorry, and um, and to Dave, uh, because Scott and I, you know, I'm, I'm going to pull back because I want to give you guys the freedom to be able to, to talk about it. What for you guys has been your experience either with social media bullying, your understanding of it? Yeah, yeah I mean, it certainly affects people of all ages. I think. Yeah. Um, it's probably quite you know, it's prevalent with young people because they're, they're on all time and they've, you know, they, I think they start younger now and oh, yeah. they don't seem to have this concept that if you, if you say things on social media that, you know, it's not going to have repercussions and they seem to think it's, you know, it just goes away, it's, but they wouldn't normally say these things yeah. face to face. Um, so, it's, mm-hmm. yeah, just need to educate people about it and it seems to be... I think it's, you know, it's quite worrying because it's about the administration of these sites, you know, like if they're... There seems to be much accountability, you know, when you try and find out, when you try and sort of report things that have been seen. So, yeah, it's a bit of a concern. Um, certainly, it does affect people. And, and it is. I mean, you know, it's something that affects uh, kids literally all, all over the world now. Um, you know, and not, not even just kids. Obviously, we've got adults as well, um, you know, that are, are taking their own life, basically, because of the result of bullying and social media and people, you know, whether it's celebrities, I've spoke to celebrities that and, and this exact same conversation, folks that you will know that are in the show. Um, and they have said, you know, that whenever they put a post up, particularly if, if it's a female, they will turn around and have a hundred or a thousand posts of, oh, well, you look fat, you look this, you look that. And in my brain, I'm like, how on earth can this just be acceptable? I don't understand it. Um, and that's obviously, unfortunately, the sometimes the, the nature of human beings that to make themselves feel better, that they will actually, you know, make other people feel worse. Sean, have you had uh, experience before a, with, with social media bullying? Um, well, with social media bullying wise, um, I've never really came across it okay. with myself. Um, I do see it a lot, mm-hmm. like, because I'm on social media all the time. I do see it a lot, though, um, especially across, I think, social media is like Snapchat, mm-hmm. Facebook, um, an app called TikTok, which is yeah. mostly for, like, um, the uh, younger generation. But, um, and it's just full of, it is full of, like, positive um comments and but you just see a lot of negative um things and just people putting people down and it's just stuff you you don't like to see yeah and it's just sometimes you're just like why like and it sees how how you how, how much it puts people down and it's just like it blows your mind like, oh, it, oh, it does. Yeah. And it, it, it blows your mind. What, what's even worse is the fact that these people would never say it to somebody else, you know, if it was face to face. They always do it behind a, yeah. a camera screen. Or a bit, yeah. And, and it's just that, like Pauline was saying, the whole accountability side of things. Uh, you know, I, I know that uh, social media and, and particularly Facebook and Instagram are now taking steps to really try and uh, block this out. Um, but unfortunately, for some people, uh, it's not soon enough and obviously we're here talking tonight uh, about a, a movement that Pauline, um, Sophie and, and, and David you know you've all been a part of and, and Sean so have you that is called Beautiful Inside and Out. Um, who wants to talk about that? Yeah um, well I founded the charity um, seven years ago now um, Sophie's older sister took her own life she was only 13 years old okay. And Sophie was just five at the time. So, um, and it was it was just a kind of, she, Jenna had told us, you know, what had been troubling her a couple of days before. Um, and it's, um, you know, it's, it's kind of like, not necessarily online bullying, but yeah. she had told us about, um, you know, people, our words to me were um, constantly undermined by, you know, certain people. Mm-hmm. And, um, it's a plan to make things more positive for her, um, but sadly she turned to her life, and we'll never know what happened that day, you know, to be the final trigger. But um, it certainly wasn't a, a one-off thing. It's been um, on her mind for a few months, I think. It is. Um, but yeah, it's just it's frightening though because of that. You know, it's 
although it's inspired by Jenna, the, the charity itself is it's not just about Jenna, it's for all the people that we support. Yeah. Um, and of all ages and bullying does tend to be one of the main issues as to why people come to us for support. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it is really difficult and to, to give some insight, um, you know, whenever you receive a negative comment, it takes 10 or sometimes 50 times positivity to actually battle out the negative. And obviously not just Jenna, uh, you know, and, and not just the folks that are on tonight, but so many people around the world, all they're hearing now is negativity over and over and over and over again. You know, when people are being told that they're, you know, no good, they're worthless, they're fat, they're ugly, they're, you know, all these horrific things that people are being told. Um, and I know folks, you know, school can be you know, one of the most hor horrific places sometimes. And if you are more emotionally susceptible to that, and you are dealing with these things internally, it can be a horrific battle. And for so many people, whether they're young or whether they're old, they just feel that they can't reach out. I know it's a really emotional uh, to talk about. And, and I don't even, I, and even when I was talking with Scott about putting the show together, I didn't even know how to broach any of this. So there are no notes for this because I want it to be as, as real and as natural as possible. What was it like for, for you guys having to go through the loss of a daughter? And, and in your case, yeah, a sister. It's, mm -hmm, yeah, it's painful every day. It doesn't really get any easier, to be honest. You just learn to cope with it a bit more, uh, function a bit more, but it doesn't, doesn't ever go away. Um, yeah, it just felt as if we were um, left to sink or swim. It wasn't like there was no support at all. You know, um, you, know you lose a child to something else it's awful but you know you're maybe prepared and it's, it wasn't actually just such a shock but we were just kind of left there was no support for you know Sophie either and we just had to try and find a way to support her so it's not been a, an easy journey for her but she's amazing me person she's she's come through so much and she she still shines which is just I think she's fabulous I really admire her to be honest the things that she has done it's like sure. you know what's happened to her really because people quite often siblings are the lost mm -hmm. I think she was such a clever wee girl when she was only um, five at the time and we found a note and she'd actually written Sophie the Forgotten One. <laughs> wow. Kind of so, sad at the time, but it's it really quite intuitive, you know, she felt as if even at that age that, you know, it's like, what about me, you know, yeah. everyone's going on about the parents, etc. Uh -huh. Sophie, what was it like for you, obviously, losing your sister? Um, it wasn't really... Is it something that you could, I know it's very difficult to put it into words, um, and we, we, we have had folks on the show that have said the exact same thing, and it doesn't matter whether they're older or younger, it's, it's when someone asks you a question like that, it's like, how do you even begin to put that into words? How did you begin to move forward as a family? Jordan, leave notes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just to think you see her, and, and certain places, then. Yeah, I think as time goes on, it's probably hard for you to articulate yeah, it, you know, course. now, isn't it? Yeah. When they're younger, you know, so would come out with how she felt, but now it's almost like, yeah. it's not a taboo subject, but, you know, it's the other people of course. usually feel uncomfortable talking yeah. about it. So, although we would, most people just don't really mention it to us, you know, mm. like, so it's, um, it's, but, you know, it's good, to, it's good to talk about it. I think people should. Well, um, well, it is because, yeah. you know, a, a lot of, uh, again, a lot of guests that come on, you know, the, the, it's always the same thing. And you hit it right in the head, Pauline, about there's a very, there's a lack of support for people out there. Because usually, you know, friends and family, they do one of two things. They want to give you spiritual guidance or they, they, they pull their hands back and say, look, we don't know how to deal with this. We don't have to talk about this. And they distance themselves. And that's in some ways the yeah. worst thing a person can do. And if we can educate people that what you need to be saying is, mm -hmm. look, I don't have a clue what on earth to say right now. What you've gone through is horrific. There's no point in playing it down, but I'm here for you. I, I, you know, I'm, even if I don't understand it, even if you know, this is beyond my comprehension, I'm here for you. And if you need to talk, we're here. Um, and yeah. I think that's sometimes more beneficial to people than just, oh, well, we're, we're, we're off and, and everything else. Amazing things obviously mm -hmm. have happened. That's, uh, that's the essence of what we do, yeah. Well, well, that's what I was going to say. Talk to us a little bit um, about beautiful inside now and and what it what it really means. What what is it really about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we support and you know, the, obviously, this Shan song is like 
and Scott's song is like mm-hmm. a really important because I think it brings out that message. Um, so when I was, it was actually an ex pupil of mine who said you should set up a charity and um, they wanted to call it Jenna's Journey or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I felt as if it shouldn't be about Jenna, it should be about everybody that needs support. Yeah. So I automatically said, you know what, it should be called Beautiful Inside and Out because I had told her that she was beautiful inside and out. And I just think that everybody should get that message, you know, across to when you come, that, that everyone is beautiful inside and out, that, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter if someone calls you ugly or anything like that, you know, it's, it's that message that, you know, everybody falls into that category so that everyone feels it when they come to us for support. So, yeah, we give counselling and play therapy, okay. drama therapy, music therapy and art therapy. And it's for anybody, any age that needs support. So I think we started out saying for young people, but... Now it's age. <laughs> if I could say, yeah, go ahead, I definitely see music. Yeah. I could definitely see music as therapy. Yeah. I oh, yeah. personally, I see music yeah. as therapy. It definitely gets me through my t- my tough times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. yeah, just I can see it as it's definitely some sort of way to help people get through stuff. Yes, folks. You know, <laughs> when we're talking about you know therapy and things. Um, you know, if I can break it down, therapy is basically a coping mechanism when we don't know how to cope. And like Sean and, and the, the folks of, and, and Scott and, and myself will tell you, you know, we find all different ways. Some people will turn to music. Some people will turn to uh, art in my case, but some people unfortunately turn to things that aren't going to be helpful for them as a coping mechanism where it's drugs, drink and, you know, and all these other things. But before we move on, one of the questions that's in my mind and I think it's, it's important for parents or family members to notice telltale signs uh, more than anything. Pauline and, and, and Dave, if you can talk to us a little bit, and even Sophie, actually, because if you were close with your sister, you, you may have noticed things. You may not have. I, I don't know. Um, but were there any telltale signs that you started to notice that were really out of character for her personality, her behavior? Yeah, I think. Okay. Mm-hmm. Just in... Um... Jenna was always so bubbly and vivacious, you know, like really um, outgoing. Um, just uh, about the last six months, probably. Right. Um, I think she would be a bit more withdrawn and would just come in and disappear to her room. Um, but you know, I, I spoke to other people about it and said I'm a bit worried about her. But yeah. um, I was always told, oh, she's 13, just ride the wave. She's just their age. You know, everybody says it's just their age, it's just their age, it's just hormones. But you know, possibly was part of it. Um, but looking back, you know, like it's always really easy to see retrospectively, you know, like oh, she was yeah. obviously just really, probably really depressed, you know, just yeah. upset. And I, I wasn't aware, she wasn't the kind of girl that come in and complain about other people. She didn't tell me anything that had been going on until just two days before. And she sort of, it was like a big long list. You know, yeah. do you remember this? Do you remember? Yeah. So and so I didn't wear that dress because they said this and blah, blah, blah. And it was a big long, all this stuff came out. Um. So, yeah, I think it was just, but, you know, I, I give talks in schools <clears> and workplaces, etc. And when I'm asked that question, I usually, you know, I say to people, like parents, just to look for any any changes. Like, you know, it could be just withdrawn from clubs or, um, you know, go up to your room and withdrawn from family, uh, which I know is the, the difficulty is that's quite a, a typical thing for teenagers to do. So it's hard to tell, is it hormones or is, it, <laughs> is there something else going on? Um, but yeah, just looking for any kind of changes and, you know, suddenly not wanting to do things or mm-hmm. or doing antisocial things, you know, and maybe hanging about with different people. I yeah. think it's just uh, it, talking it, to, to people, yeah, and talking it, to your family. Uh, so go ahead, Dave. David. Yeah. Um, I mean, there was no kind of build. There was no warning, like okay. you know, someone left self harming or anything like that. That, 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 we were, that we were aware of, and we, we certainly didn't see anything. Yeah. I mean, indeed. Not long before that, Jenna was telling us about some of our, our friends who were engaging in some of that practice. Right. So, you know, there was, I would say, virtually no warning that this was such a serious problem for her. And I think it's yeah, it's difficult as adults to put yourself in the mind of a child. A yeah. child, I think, doesn't see an end to the pain the way adults have life experience to help them yeah. cope, coping mechanisms. It's, and it's, that's the difficulty with it. It, it's, it it's is. Child, I know, it? Sorry, I was just going to say, I know in my own life that, you know, when I was in school, you know, things that people had said to me affected me for a long, long time. Like, I hated being called skinny. 
that was one of the things. And I was, you know, my dad was slight build and it bothered me. My gran would say it and anybody, and it became such a psychological thing for me going through it. It was like, oh my goodness, this is, you know, and, and now I don't worry about it, you know, and, and all those, because again, all these years later, and plus I'm in my thirties and it's easy to put a muscle, but I know these things stay with you and, you know, can be really, really difficult, obviously. And if a child's going through it and the friends that you thought, you know, or the people you thought were your friends, and now the ones that are adding to the, the trauma and, the, and the, the struggle and everything, it makes it a very, very lonely, lonely place. How did you guys begin to yeah. move forward as a family? Yeah, difficult. I think for a while you live in parallel, you know, you, of it's almost like the elephant in the room, you know, you yeah. kind of like, agree. it's difficult yeah, to, you're, you're, you're trying you're to. Living in denial. Mm -hmm. yeah. Trying to but, cope with your own emotions, but look after each other as well and yeah. the wee one. <laughs> I mean, I wonder, Personally, I don't think you, you you ever move on from yeah. the love of a child. It's it's not like that. It's just finding a way to cope yeah. and and manage somehow. But life seems to find a way, especially yeah. when you've got Sophie to look after. Yeah, I mean Sophie, yeah. Sophie probably kept us all going, you know. And also, it's milestones. It's difficult. Like you know, yeah. Jenna's twenty first birthday yeah. next week, so it's difficult. That kind of thing. You just. Uh -huh. We would normally be preparing a party uh -huh. and being excited about things, you know, but it's all these things that you miss out on as well. And it's, you know, you don't, you don't forget, you know, you just, and as the fact, everyone else's life just carries on, you know, so as it, normal. It is one of those, um, but yeah. I was just going to say, it's one of the strangest things, you know, what, no matter what trauma we go through, no matter what difficulty we go through, life is, is horrible in that way, it doesn't stop. You know what I mean? And it's just, you know, mm -hmm. everyone else seems to be going on and going through these things. And yeah. I know for myself in situations that I've been through, and obviously for, 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 the, for everybody that's on the show tonight, you know, in your own mind, it's like life seems to be stuff that happens to everybody else. And when you're stuck in that mm. sadness and that valley period, it's just like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just like a numbness and everything else seems to be going on around you and nothing seems to be moving forward. Um, we yeah. want to talk about, um, because again, we, 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 we have stressed this, that bullying is such a, it seems to be a prevalent thing and a prevalent situation within schools, within the workplace and, and all over the place. And I think if we can teach anybody anything, it's, you know, really think about what you do and what you say, because what you do and say really has a massive impact on other people. And, and obviously we, we, we've discovered that, um, not just with, with Jenna, um, but there's so many that have, have unfortunately felt that there was just no, no no light at the end of the tunnel. And that's a horrible place to be. Um, and yeah, it, it's, it, yeah, there, there are no words, unfortunately, but you guys did something incredible, in my opinion. You not only opened up your own hearts about this, but you started working together on a song. And we are going to play that song on this show and you are going to get worldwide exposure because that has been my promise to Scott. It's my promise to you guys, because, you know, it's I know everyone gets excited about that. When I say that, it's just like, oh, that's really cool. <laughs> but, you know, it's if anything else, it reminds people every single time they hear that, that they need to be thinking more about other people and less about themselves. Talk to us a little yeah. bit about, and, and, and this can be open to, to any one of you, in fact, whoever jumps in there first, go for it, um, how this song really came to be. Can I come in first? Go for it, Scott. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Um, well, I met Pauline, we actually haven't known each other that long, and I met her the day after our last the last event, I run a music business called Possibility Screams and we had an event and the, and we have events, but the last one I had, I met her the next day and something happened uh, subsequently. I thought the next event that I have for Possibility Screams were going to benefit Beautiful Inside and Out. That's what, yeah. you know, came to be. And, and I got the leaflet and it's, it's the title is actually beautiful. It's, it, when you think of it, beautiful inside and out. I mean, what a great phrase. And John, you said it, and Pauline would say it, like, everybody should know that, you yeah. know, that regardless of what you're going through, you are beautiful inside and out, unique in your own way. And the song really carries the message of the charity, really. 
And it was a few weeks certainly after, and I had the leaflet sitting in my front living room. And um, I write a lot of songs. I actually write more lyrics than songs. <laughs> and something in me just, and I started jotting down lyrics. And, and um, obviously I never knew Jenna. And I actually didn't really want the song to be totally about Jenna. I think a bit like Pauline has said, the charity may have started through a, a tragedy, but it's not all about her. It's about yeah. different things that they want to tackle. And that's really what the song, I wanted her to be in it, but it's actually, I want it, I want it to, I wanted it to kind of go over the walls, you know, just have, have a message that would reach a lot of people. And the core message is beautiful inside and out. So I wrote the lyrics, wrote the, wrote the tune, I thought, what amazing young singer can I get to sing it? <laughs> so the and and I'll I'll tell you this, and a lot of people I could have asked, but the very first person I asked was Shan Clark, because she's a mate, 16 year old singer songwriter, and um, she's not got any music out of her own. So I know I wrote the song, but it's an original track that she's got yeah. coming out early December. It's going to be great for her. She did a great job on it, but it is going to benefit the charity. So there's going to be a mix of, you know, it's like a debut single. It is an original song with a great message. It's actually not really a, it's certainly not a slow, depressing song. It's actually got a little bit of a pop, pop sensibility about it. And uh, it, it might be nice for Shan to, uh, speak speak about it or something. Mm -hmm. We definitely want it to benefit the charity because Pauline and Dave have done an amazing job yeah. setting that up. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Shan, go for it. Share with us a little bit about your story and what this song really means to you. Yeah. Um. So when I got the song, my mom. Well, it started off with my mum coming through, saying, "Oh, Scott's got this amazing opportunity for you," and I was just like. Oh my gosh, like, ah, this is, so, this is so good. Like, I can't wait and all that. Um, and then we got the lyrics and we got the, the tune and him playing it. And I, when I first listened to it through, I thought, this is amazing. Like, this is going to be so good. Um, so, and when I listened to it, I could hear the words through and through, beautiful inside now. And I could just hear... The, the 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 words saying um sometimes it's a cry a cry for help for young yeah. girls yeah. um because they're if they get told you're beautiful then it would help them get through mm -hmm. it, would, it would maybe help them like yeah. get through what what they we are yeah. what they're going through i definitely would I would definitely put my f a smile on my face mm -hmm. if I got computer inside now. Um, but when I was listening to the song, I was just like, "This is definitely going to help all the young girls." Yeah. Um, uh, that's going through not even get, just just girls, mm -hmm. boys as well. Like, um, just saying, like, you are who you are. You're amazing. Yeah. And I just, I think that this song is really going to help a lot of people. Um, and that's why I was glad to do it. Not just because this is a great music opportunity, it's because this, this could help a, a lot of people. Um, so that's why I was happy to do it. I, I, thought when, yeah. I thought when Shan says at the start, when I heard the demo with Scott singing, I thought, I can sing it better than that. <laughs> <laughs> Which, which is actually very true. <laughs> she, she sings a lot better than me. And I think the subject matter was great for a female yeah. voice on it, and she, she's done an amazing job. We actually don't have the track yet. Sam Gallagher that we, we worked with, um, Shan did the vocals, I did some guitar, there's wonderful backing vocals on it. Sophie's even on it, the very, very end of the song, we've got her lovely wee voice on. <laughs> so... Um, we probably won't have the actual track for a couple of weeks yet, but it yep. will be out at the beginning of December. Um, as I said, J Jenna's personality runs through the song, but it's yeah. but it's it's wider than that the, the charity has got to reach to wider issues. And um, we, I think, um, 
I've managed to capture an essence of her in the lyrics, although I didn't know her. And uh, I think it will benefit a lot of people. And, and again, Shan's done a terrific job. But but did you know so? Did you know Sophie has a single out joint? Do you realise that? I, I yeah. believe actually, yeah, because I'm sitting here looking at the notes that you sent me. Uh, I did my homework. I haven't had a lot of time to do homework, but I have had. Okay. Just, just so you know, folks, in the last four weeks since launching this podcast, we've done 30 different interviews. It's been mobbed. Wow. Um, and it's, wow. yeah, it's, I haven't stopped. And I'm juggling two businesses at the moment. Uh, um, but to, to get back to the show, um, what has this song meant to you guys? And, and we'll start with uh, Pauline, Dave and Sophie. What has this song meant to you, if, if, if it's not too strong a word, from a healing point of view? I think it's just it's, it's good to sort of um, <clears throat> promote that message, you know, that to make everybody feel good about themselves and believe in themselves, and to reach out if you need any any help. Yeah. So from that point of view, you know, you were saying about that's that's the line I actually always use about the work of the charity. You know, that if if our, if we can save even one life in our pain, it's not for nothing. So it's the same with um, with the song, you know, like if that reaches out to to even one girl or one boy, then, you know, it's worthwhile. Yeah. So. Wonderful. Definitely. Because just touching on that, actually, you know, and, and again, recurring themes, boys in particular are told, you know, don't show your feelings, don't show emotion. That's changing a little bit, certainly in the UK, certainly in Scotland, but more in the United States and, and in other areas around the world. That is still, you know, you don't show emotion. We did a show um, actually that will follow, in fact, it'll be, it'll be before your show um, with Gabe Nathan, who works with suicide prevention in the United States. And he was talking a lot about that, um, which is part of the reason I was really excited to do this show with you because the, you know, it gets like part one, part two. Um, girls are taught to, you know, show emotion, show this, show that, the other. But again, you know, it's like Pauline was saying, it's difficult sometimes to be able to tell the difference between and I hate this phrase, but I don't have a better one at this time of night, um, teenage emotion and, you know, the, the real deeper stuff that's going on. Sean, has, has there been experiences in your life that you've, you know, that you felt, oh my goodness, you know, how do I, how do I get through this next stage in my life? You know, have there been particularly down points in your life that helped you resonate with the, the stories, obviously, that we're talking about tonight? Well, Yes, I definitely would have to say that. Um, there's been a lot of like places, times in my life where I felt very down, and um, especially recently, actually, the song has kind of has helped me. Um, when Scott came to me with the song, I um, was in a really bad state of mental health, yeah. um, but with music and singing the song and the meaning of the song really, really got me like through that. That's what's, what this song's meant to me. Um, but um, I have went through the state, a stage of bullying before. Um, that was when I was a bit younger in primary school. Um, so I have went through the experience of bullying and all that, um, but yeah, with this song and music and mm -hmm. it's definitely helped me in a way that um it's just it's, it's, it's amazing yeah it's amazing what what music can do for anyone absolutely um, but yeah we, we share that with folks as well you know that you know if, if you really want to change your mood and your mindset evaluate what you're listening to and i find when i put on you know some of the old songs from the 70s like abba and john denver and, and all these different things i find the one that is what i call pure energy because i know the songs that i love i know the songs that i uh, really associate with and really um enjoy a lot and that changes a lot of my mindset and my mood and what I would encourage anybody that's watching the show that's really struggling either with the, the down periods in their, in their life and feeling like garbage, um, you know, you've got to find and, and make this a priority. You've got to, got to, got to, must, absolutely, positively, I can't say it in any other way. You've got to find that thing for you that is your passion. I found in doing these shows that it's been healing for me with all the guests that's been on. Sc Scott, I wanted to ask you as well, because we've never talked, obviously, um, about this. Were the times in your younger life when you ever experienced bullying or there was times that you were, you know, in, in more of a down place? 
<laughs> so one thing we didn't talk about in our show. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You're putting me on the spot. I mean, my 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 youth was a bit years years ago. Um, uh, I've got to be honest. I wasn't really really the type of guy you would have bullied. I don't. Yeah. So I I wasn't. Um, in fact, when when I was a bit younger, I would have been more likely to <laughs> to put one on. Somebody else. <laughs> so I, I've I've changed considerably. So yeah. I've I've not. I wouldn't be the best one to talk to who'd been a reciprocant yeah. really of that kind of thing. Okay. But um, I'm a real advocate of um, what we're talking about here tonight. Yeah, I've written other songs that I've kind of touched on similar things. I've, I've been in a bit of compassion for different subjects that, that have hopefully helped some people along the way. And this is just another song in that line. Yeah of, of a, a song that has a real message. What I did want to say, yeah, yeah, um, for excuse me if I never really answered your question there, but um, the thing about music that is different from anything else, and, and Sophie will know this as a singer, Shan will know this as a singer, you know, you, you often can't quote lyrics, but you can yeah. sing them yeah, because yeah. music, music gets, I, I've been in situations, I've been on stage and I couldn't remember the next line I was going to sing. But see, when I got mm -hmm. to it, I remembered it. Yeah. Because, because music gets in your brain, it gets in your spirit, it gets in mm -hmm. your soul. And that, that line, what I did, and I kind of did this in purpose, it's the chorus of the song. You know, they say in music, there's a wee saying, it says, don't bore us, get to the chorus. Yeah. And the chorus is only beautiful inside and out. That's it. So... It's so repetitive that when you hear this song one time, yeah, that line is going to be in your brain and it's going to get down into your spirit. And you may not remember anything else, but if you can go through the day without running through your heart, beautiful inside now, then this song's been a success. And it is. And, you know, and, you know, and I'm, I know I've, I've been there. Uh, I'm really want to lift up the two young girls, Sophie and Shan. They're really amazing. But Shan really did a great, great job in this, and, and you will, you will love me here. And, and I'm delighted. So apologize, apologize if I didn't really answer your question. I, I like, get used to it with the guests that are on the show. Sometimes they veer off in directions that I never intended them to. <laughs> and you know, to, to be able to talk about it, obviously, in, in such an emotional thing, um, is, is a, it, it, it speaks volumes. To the strength that you've got as a family and you know for, for everyone that's affected obviously in, in a variety of different ways it speaks volumes to be able to talk about these things um and yeah. i think you have to reach a certain point in your own life where i'm not going to say where it doesn't hurt because i know there are still times in my life that i've got to be very careful of what subjects i approach but where you can actually talk about it and yeah it, it it's just it, 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 I'm not going to say it becomes easy. I don't even know how to finish that sentence, but you're able to talk about it because I think sometimes it can be really difficult. David, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, just throw th uh, something out to you. How are you coping with things just now? Yeah, like I say, um, you, you just find a way yeah. to take each day. Literally, that, that's it. And some days, yeah, you, the darkness comes down and you, you can get yourself on a real downer about the loss, the sense of loss, of and uh, I'm a teacher myself, and I see young young girls every day, and I see Jenna's face, you know, when I look around, sure. and uh, it's very difficult. Of course, but you know, not not to look back and think of the life she might have had. Yeah, but I believe you just have to keep going on. Mm -hmm. You have to keep positive, and uh, when you've got, as I said before, you've got a young girl to bring up. Yeah, you have responsibilities, and uh, you've just got to find a way. Yeah, yeah. And and I think it's you know but it is you it's know it's not something. So go ahead. I say uh, it's not something you you will ever get over. Yeah, it's just you find a way to take the days. And and the the whole thing is as well you know the no amount of teaching because I I was saying this to Scott from from my perspective you know, that there is no amount of youth work teaching, there's no amount of ministerial teaching, there's no amount of self-help and guidance and all that other stuff that's out there that can actually prepare you, number one, for doing a show like this, but number two, 
to be on the receiving end to be told hey your best friend has commit suicide or you know your, your best friend's basically been taken to a, an institution because they attempted to commit suicide um, and obviously in your case that you know your, your daughter has you know taken her own life that there's nothing that can prepare you for that and again that's why i want to reiterate that it's so important for folks if you know someone that's struggling don't try and minister to them don't try and give them the whole motivational speeches or anything like that try just being there for them more than anything because that's what they need more than anything at all um scott is there anything that you want to pick up on re regarding the song and how i suppose this all came to be if we haven't covered that too much just yet if, if that makes sense I, I would like to say this um talking about the whole social media and and oh. really really negativity yeah um, you know, whether you're a religious person or not, this is what's running through my mind as we're talking. J Jesus said, do unto others mm -hmm. as you'd have done unto yeah. yourself. And whether you're a religious person or not, that in the world, is, that is called the golden rule. Yeah. People call it the golden rule, but it's known as. And if people, whether they're, five-year-old or 95 live their life on that principle do unto others as you would have un done unto yourselves this whole world would be a different place Boy. if you thought before you sent something negative on social media would i like that sent to me yeah no you wouldn't well don't do it to other but that's simply what that yeah. means and that was that was running through my mind nearly the whole time this has been said i think what a um, you know, whether you believe in Jesus or not, that is an amazing, yeah. amazing statement. I personally do believe mm -hmm. in Jesus, but whether you do or not, um, that would change the world. That people, yeah. are, I'm not going to be negative. I'm not going to bring that person down. I'm not going to tear that because I don't want to toward them. Yeah, you do do unto others you'd have done unto yourself. So, uh, um, anyway, I'd like to say that. Um, it's it's also the also whole... I'd like. Sorry, go ahead, Scott. Sorry. No, no, you, you might be more important what you're going to say. <laughs> you're not even more important. Go for it. <laughs> I, I, I was just going to say, you know, it is important for people to to realize that everything we do has a consequence. You know, that the whole thing, if you reap what you sow more than what you sow, later than what you sow, you guys have invested into something amazing. And I'm so proud of all of you, even though I'm meeting a lot of you for the first time tonight. Scott and I met nearly a decade ago and, you know, we've got all sorts of different stories. But the whole thing is, you know, you guys are not only going to reap the reward for yourself and for Jenna's memory, and for, but for so many other people as well. I genuinely believe you're going to be a lifesaver when they hear that song. How many times have you heard stories over and over again where people have said, you know, well, well, I heard a specific song and all of a sudden I didn't want to, you know, end my life. Yeah. I didn't want to be miserable anymore. Yeah. I didn't want, you know, um, yeah. it's it's a powerful thing. You know, people really forget. And this is what drove me mad. We actually started a, a major campaign actually a couple of months ago um, because when they were talking about the creative mind being, uh, you know, the, the lesser skill or things like that. I've been in the art business 18 years. This show is a result of the creative mind. This song is a result of the creative mind. What we're talking yeah. about tonight is a result of the creative mind. Folks, if the creative mind ain't there, TV's gone, internet's gone, music's gone, books have gone, That's everything right. is gone. Yeah. And I am yeah. so delighted and proud of all of you guys for, for putting this together in, in a way that's going to help change people's lives so much. As we wrap up the show, um, I'm going to talk to you, each one of you individually. I'll start with Sean. Is there anything that you want to, to, to add, you know, to tonight's show? Um, I'm putting you on the spot, I know. <laughs> I'm good at doing this. Apparently. I know. Well, I'd have to say that um, Beautiful Inside and Out is, I think, is an amazing charity and... Um, it goes out to a lot of young girls that that do struggle. And I have told so many people about this charity now that I found out about it. And I've been telling everybody, go buy Sophie Henderson's song, go buy um, my song when it comes out. And it's just been all about promoting and um, this, not, not along the, the songs, the charity as well. And mm. I've just been telling everybody, Awesome. about this and like how much it can help um young girls 
um and uh yeah so I just think that just I, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good I can't wait for <laughs> Scott how about yourself you're a man yeah. lost for words is there anything that you want to add to tonight's show well, I'm definitely going to take the opportunity because you said this will be <laughs> seen by millions. <laughs> I can't so, believe it myself. Sophie, Sophie Henderson, 12 years of age, has her first single out right now. It's called In Future Fields. She yep. wrote the lyrics for the poem. I wrote the music. We recorded it with SG Productions in Glasgow. It sounds amazing. A lot of people have heard the song. They love it. You can download it on iTunes, Amazon, Spotify. Um, I'm just taking the opportunity, John, and millions yeah, of people are listening to this. Mm -hmm. It's called In Future Fuels by Sophie. It sounds amazing. Right. Great backing vocals on it. And it was really, we put it out for primarily Remembrance Day, which was just two days yeah. ago. Yeah. Amazing subject. It's got good, very good response. It's been on radio. And it's not just for Remembrance Day because... We should remember what these, uh, you know, men and women who gave her their life for us, for our freedom. We should remember them every day. So that is a great song. Go buy it. Sophie Henderson in Future Fields. Mm -hmm. Shan Clark, that's S-I-A-N, Clark without an E. Yeah. <laughs> it will be out um, really at, at the latest early December. We don't have a mix yet from... Sam, he probably Sam Gallagher, who did a great job on it. Um, but we should have the song within about a week and a half. Okay. It'll be on, on all good platforms. So I'm plugging this beautiful inside now. Her first single, Sophie's first single, it's the start of a great career for both of them. Well, well just while we're touching yeah. on that, and you yeah, know, like, yeah, like I say, you know, it, it's going to be seen. This show is going to be seen by a lot of people around the world. What I'm going to do for you guys is we're actually going to have your songs on the end of this show. And I'm going to do that for you guys because I am so just proud and impressed. And Scott's already sent me over Sophie's. I'm looking at it right now. That the cover is really 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 it, it's, it's wonderful. And I know Scott and I, we've been talking about that. And, and Scott's so excited. He's like a little puppy sometimes. He's like, could you, could you, could you? And I'm like, Ooh. yes, absolutely. <laughs> Pauline, uh, Dave, and yeah. Sophie, is there anything? No, it's so many lovely. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, can. Can I just say that if anyone's out there struggling, having a rough time of it, that what you're going through will be permanent, will yeah. not be permanent, sorry. <laughs> and there is a way out. So will not, it's not yeah. the thing that has to be in your mind all the time. Yes. And don't underestimate how you can make someone's day just with a smile. Yeah, definitely. I think that's a really powerful thing, yeah. and I want to take the opportunity yeah. now to, to release a little bit of our news, uh, which is an exclusive for all you guys. We're actually developing a thing online that is going around the world, um, and it's called the listening ear. And because every person, again, that's been on the show has had struggles, difficulties, whether it's them, whether or not it's, it's other people, and we want to make sure that there is a platform and a place for people to go. Um, there'll be a free option, there'll be a membership option as well. It's all in development. By the time obviously this comes out, it'll probably be done um, because we tend to work quick here. Um, but we want to make sure that folks around the world have really got an opportunity to reach out, know that somebody's going to be there, know there's going to be um, encouragement and support. And that's what we're all about in this show. Um, and obviously we'll, we'll tell you more all about the details and that and everything uh, closer to the time. But as I say, uh, Pauline, David, and uh, Sophie, is there anything that you want to add before we wrap up the show for tonight? No. Yeah. Well, there's another you mentioned. I'm, I'm actually thinking it's quite interesting because we have the two songs. So we've got Beautiful mm -hmm. Inside Night, we have In Future Fields. And in a way, they kind of, they sound like totally separate subjects, but they're not really because, yeah. you know, mental health yeah. and veterans and, you know, um, soldiers, et cetera, is a huge issue, of course. Mm -hmm. um, because of in future feels my family and I got you know we got chatting quite a lot my parents have died and um not able to chat to them but my sister was telling me stories that my my grandpa had come back from the war and actually had sat you know in a corner for about 30 years afterwards because he was yeah. so traumatized by it you know so in future feels is actually full of hope so if you 
anybody listening wants to yeah. go on and listen to it, it's actually the words in it are lovely because it's a message of hope, really, yeah. you know, for the future for other people. It really so. is. It's a it's a really good song. I had the I've been listening to it a couple of times and yeah. I'm just like, wow. So good. <laughs> it, it really is a delight honestly and you know it, it is uh, pauline was saying there you know what people forget in a lot of times and we're going to cover this in in depth because actually we've got a, a world-renowned neurobiologist coming on the show very very soon and we're going to cover all about the mind and everything that's there people forget i know scott it's amazing four weeks of doing this and already we've had some big guests and i can't believe it but um folks honestly you know i think people forget sometimes when you're going through trauma when you're going through what they went through in the first and second world war it changes you the mind can cope with so much trauma and then it starts to really change uh, the, the person and and we respond to things in a different difficult and different way and it's important never ever to downplay some of the situations that you're going through thinking well maybe you know nah, it's not that bad someone's always worse off yeah they might be but at the end of the day, it's you, it's where you're at right now. And it's important to be honest about that. And yeah. we, we've had an amazing time tonight. I really have loved um, all you guys being on. Definitely check out uh, Sean Clark's song. Like I said, we're going to have that. We'll have all the links up for you guys um, and Sophie's as well. I'm delighted and so proud to, to present this interview and, and present this uh, podcast to you guys. Uh, and if you want to support them, go ahead. You know, in this day and age, it's important to support things that really are making a difference because there's so many charities yes. out there, you know, and this is one that I firmly believe. And I, and I for, for us and what we're doing, I can see we're going to be involved in some way down the line because we're, we're so uh, almost like, you know, mirror image and lining up together. And we're really excited about it. And I want to thank Scott Nickel, of course, for putting it together um you know and and i look forward to doing more shows so i'm going to run down the names hopefully i'll get them all right uh mm -hmm. want to thank sophie we want to thank dave we want to thank pauline we want to thank sean we want to thank scott i have been your host john morris i got through all that without stuttering this has been the mind body and soul podcast where we help you find balance in the craziness of day-to-day -day life don't forget to like share and subscribe because in doing so, not only does it help our little business, but if you tell a friend, it may be the very thing that helps them and in some people's case, saves their life. And obviously we're touching on really serious and, and you know relevant topics as well, folks. And we really wanna get that across. So don't hesitate. If you've got any questions, feel free, write us in and, and we'll obviously get in touch with the relevant people that we need to. And come and visit us at thebattlesweallface.com where you can check out my brand new book, The Battles We All Face. And like I say, we look at anxiety, we look at trauma, we look at depression and everything in between. This will be something that if you apply the life teaching, uh, it, it will be life-changing. Plus there's also exclusively some of my artwork in there that has never been seen before. So and it can only be seen by purchasing the book. So there you go. It's available in ebook paperback signed paperback and there is an audio version coming as well so i'm delighted until Woo! next time thank you so much for watching i've been your host john morris mind body and soul podcast like share and subscribe come and visit the battles we all and we'll see you next time